Another lesson from math, page 1076. This is on solving equations using two steps. I want to jump in here at page 24. I hope that the pages after the previous checkup and leading up to page 24, you studied the examples carefully and were able to solve those problems. Uh, they involved usually just undoing one number, one step in order to solve. We're going to do some now that are a little more complicated. They involve doing two steps. And um, if you pay attention, these two problems are actually um, in your lesson on one of the pages. And uh, so this will kind of help you get two problems done from your homework. I always like to tell my students in algebra to draw a line through the equals and go down the page just to kind of separate the two sides. And remember that the two sides of the equation have to stay balanced. One of the main rules of algebra is that we can do any operation to one side of the equation as long as we do the same thing to the other. So if we add 5 to one side, I can add 5 to the other. If I divide one side by 2, I can divide the other side by 2. As long as I do it to both sides, I keep it balanced. The other main rule of algebra is I keep wanting, I keep, I'm trying to solve for the variable, okay, the letter. And so I want to undo, the pace calls it the inverse operation, do the opposite operation of whatever's being done to the variable in order to isolate the variable. We always undo the addition or subtraction before we undo the multiplication or division. So it's kind of like the order of operations, but in reverse. So we start at the bottom and work up, okay? So I'm going to subtract 6 because subtracting 6 will cancel that out. And that's what I wanted. This gives me 42, and then over here I have 3 times x. Keep the equals right on the line. So now, to solve this, I'm going to undo multiplication. So I'm going to divide by 3 and do that on both sides of the equation, okay? So that cancels x equals, and the answer is going to be 14, okay? And then it's a good idea to take that number back in and check it. Multiply 3 times 14, you get 42. 42 plus 6, sure enough, it's 48. Let's look at this one here now. Again, I'm going to draw a line through the equals because I want to keep the two sides balanced, okay? I'm going to undo addition. So I'm going to subtract 20 from both sides. I should have chosen one that had a minus here, and then you would see that the opposite of that would be to add 20 to both sides. But since this is adding, we'll do the opposite. So that cancels, and I have y divided by 16 equals 24 minus 20 is 4, okay? Now, here's the mistake a lot of students make when they see this. They think, oh, this means divide, so y must equal 4, <clears throat> because 4 divided by 16 does not equal 4. When you think about this pattern, remember the numerator has to be much larger because the numerator divided by 16 has to equal 4. But let's talk about just the procedure of how to solve this. This is y divided by 16, so without even thinking, I just have to say, all right, the opposite of dividing is multiplying. And if I multiply both sides by 16, then that will cancel, and y will equal 64. And now I can take the 64, Check it, put 64 up here, 64 divided by 16 is 4, 4 plus 20, it checks, it equals 24. Okay, so those are two-step problems. <clears throat> you have several of them on this page, and hopefully you'll be successful doing those. Some of them, you may find the solutions in the PACE scorekeeping.